Hi everyone, this is Joe Deli Carpini from the National Weather Service in Boston with our webinar on the outlook for winter 2024 to 2025. To start, let's take a look at some of the average seasonal snowfall totals around southern New England. On the map on the left, you can see that areas of Cape Cod to Nantucket receive as little as 20 to 30 inches of snow on average through the winter season. Those totals begin to increase as you head toward the south coast, where amounts of 30 to 40 inches can be expected on average. Most of southern New England is in the 40 to 60 inch snowfall range over the season, and areas to the north and west, including the higher elevations, receive between 60 and 80 inches on average. And you can see for each location here in southern New England, ranging from about 49 inches in Boston, 52 in Hartford, about 37 inches in Providence, and close to 73 inches for Worcester. Now, taking a look at last winter, I think many of us will remember a warm and especially wet and rainy winter, and that's certainly true here looking at the statistics. You can see uh, temperatures on average, and this includes the daily high temperature and daily low temperature, range between 35 and 40 degrees along the south coastal areas, 30 to 35 degrees across much of southern New England, with some of the higher terrain between 25 and 30 degrees for average temperature. This includes December, January, and February. And note on the right, the departure is all above normal, anywhere from about two to four to even four to six degrees above average for the winter months. Precipitation totals, as you can see, were above to much above normal across southern New England, with totals of anywhere from two to four inches, some pockets of four to six, and even six to eight inches, but a large area of eight to ten inches of precipitation across Connecticut and into Rhode Island. This includes rain and melted snow. Now the observed snowfall, this goes out a little bit farther in time from December through the end of April. You can see totals as probably not much of a surprise were below to much below normal across much of the region. Amounts as little as 5 to 10 inches in some of the south coastal areas, Cape Cod and the islands, 10 to 20 inches throughout much of the region, and the interior only about 20 to 30 inches with uh, some areas of 30 to 40 inches in northern Worcester County and out toward the Berkshires, where elevation really played a, a more of a role in getting some significant snowfall. So just taking a look at some of the snowfall graphs for our climate sites, you can see for Boston, just shy of 10 inches, which is much below average. The brown line represents the average seasonal snowfall for these locations, and the green curve shows the actual measured snow. In Providence, just over 18 inches of snow, again, well below the average, which is uh, just over 36, close to 37 inches. In the interior, even uh, Hartford was well below normal, about 25 inches of snow for the season, as well as Worcester, about 42 and a half inches of snow for the season. Now, there were a couple of notable storms in the winter. They occurred fairly late in the season. Uh, the one most people probably remember is the February 13th winter storm, which dumped over a foot of snow across Connecticut and into northern Rhode Island. But many areas in northern Massachusetts, including greater Boston, were pretty much shut out from the storm. If you remember, the storm track ended up going a little bit farther south than what the models had originally anticipated. And that allowed a lot of dry air up in northern New England to kind of infiltrate into the northern half of Massachusetts, cutting down on snowfall totals there. Another storm was in early April, and this was a higher elevation storm, which has kind of been the theme for the past couple of winters. Areas typically at or above 1,000 feet do fairly well with snowfall, while the lower elevations tend to see little, if any, snow. And in this case, you can see amounts of 8 to 10 inches across some of the higher terrain of northern Worcester County and along the Berkshires as well. But really outside of that, only a couple of inches at most um, across parts of the region. So as we look for the uh, the outlook for this coming winter, we'll, we'll mention our usual caveats. There really are no reliable methods for forecasting seasonal snowfall here in New England. Uh, our winters are really driven what, what are called transient features that change kind of on a weekly basis. That has to do with the polar jet stream position. That really drives uh, the storm track as well as the amount of cold air that can be in place. So we will discuss a couple of global circulations though that that can have some impact, but keep in mind the correlation for both is, is rather weak. That includes La Nina for this upcoming winter and something called the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which we'll talk a little about more next. 
So for this upcoming winter, La Nina is expected to return. There's about a 60% chance that it does so. And as of November, we're already seeing uh, sea surface temperatures cool across the equatorial Pacific. Now, just a refresher, we look at the, uh, the those water temperatures in the uh, equatorial Pacific in the boxed area there on the map. Uh, when it's cooler than normal, that's called a La Nina. When it's warmer than normal, that's an El Nino. And last winter was a very strong El Nino. We had very warm water temperatures in that region. But this year, it's kind of done a flip back to La Nina. So we'll see how that works. But in either case, there is a connection between the ocean and the atmosphere, which does produce some global weather influences. And we'll talk about those. So the projections for this winter uh, show La Nina uh, probably maximizing or becoming strongest over the winter months and then kind of uh, weakening again as we get into spring. But you can see in the black circled areas on both of these maps, these are the model projections for December, January, and February. Notice on the left, that's the CFS model, which is a climate model. It shows uh, pretty close to a moderate La Nina, which is down to that minus one. La Nina is typically starts at the minus 0.5, which is the blue line. So we're below that. On the right, notice it's a little bit weaker. We're closer to that bluer minus 0.5 line, which would suggest uh, more of a weak La Nina. And uh, we'll talk about the differences as to what we can expect between a weak or even a moderate La Nina here in southern New England. So overall in North America during the winter, La Nina tends to produce colder than normal temperatures from Alaska throughout uh, much of Western Canada. Wetter conditions in the Pacific Northwest, the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, and relatively warm and dry conditions from the desert southwest across the Gulf Coastal states. So really, as you see in New England, there's no direct correlation, but we can look at some you know, recent uh, La Nina years to kind of get a sense of maybe what we can expect. So in past La Ninas, you can see it's kind of all over the place. Um, whether you're looking at a strong La Nina, a moderate La Nina, or even a weak one, there are years where it's certainly colder than average, as indicated by the blue shading, warmer than average, as determined by the kind of the orange and red shading. So there really is no direct correlation to say if we're in a weak La Nina, this is going to happen, or a moderate La Nina, this is going to happen with temperature. And you can see the same holds true for precipitation. We have years where it's wetter than average, as shown by the green, drier than average is shown by the brown shading. So really there isn't much correlation here to say one way or the other um, what La Nina will bring us here in Southern New England. But what we can do is kind of look back at some of the past performance to maybe get a sense of what we can expect. So what we're showing here is a table of uh, La Nina winters showing snowfall, precipitation, and average temperature for our four climate sites. Notice in the highlighted areas, I've highlighted the weak La Ninas. And you can see uh, most, for the most part, it's below average snowfall. The exception is in Hartford, where it's actually tends to be a little bit above average. So that tells us that overall, we can expect below average snow, but maybe some parts of the interior will do a little bit better, maybe come closer to normal in that case. If you look at precipitation, which includes the rain and melted snow, notice it's pretty much at or below normal. Again, the exception is in the Hartford area. And the average temperatures tend to be near or even a little bit below average in a week La Nina winter. So uh, that's something we look going forward, you know, that's certainly one thing that we can expect. Now, if we get to a moderate La Nina, You'll notice the snowfall totals get a little bit higher. In some cases, they actually go a little bit above average. Um, the precipitation totals tend to get a little bit near or even below normal, and temperatures tend to be below normal. So that tells us uh, that the colder weather in a moderate La Nina year potentially could bring a little bit more snowfall, even though precipitation totals are a little bit below average. But again, not a strong correlation here. So some comments just to mention. No two La Nina events are the same. You know, history can certainly tell us what happens on average, uh, but a range of outcomes is always possible. You can have a weak La Nina with a lot of snow. You could have a weak La Nina that virtually has no snow. It's just there's a range of outcomes always possible. Now, keep in mind also our current forecast favors a weak and relatively short-lived La Nina, but the global oceans are warmer than they have been in the past, and we just don't know how that's going to impact the upcoming La Nina this winter. We can't do a direct one-to-one -one correlation with La Nina, say, from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, because the global oceans were colder then. So, you know, is it possible that things are different because of a warmer ocean? That's certainly the case, and we'll just have to see. So I also want to talk about the Madden-Julian Oscillation. 
kind of a technical term, but it does have some importance on our weather here in North America. What this is, it's an eastward moving pulse of clouds and really showers and thunderstorms near the equator that typically kind of recycles every 30 to 60 days. On the right kind of shows the progression that begins over the Indian Ocean, makes its way to Indonesia and eventually ends up over the Pacific Ocean. So there are eight phases which are related to location of these showers and storms, and it's only active during a La Nina or neutral condition. So it's certainly going to be a player this year with our weak La Nina conditions expected. And you can go to the Climate Prediction Center webpage to find out the latest update, where the, what phase we're in and kind of what is expected over the next few weeks. But we've done some local research here to say, what does this MJO do on U.S. East Coast storm tracks? And you can see on the right, kind of showing different phases and um, the percent change in the probability of daily snowfall. This is over December, January, and February. Noticed in the boxed areas, phases two to three and seven and eight are favorable for increased snowfall here in the East Coast and in Southern New England, while the other phases, especially phases four through six, show lower chances of snow. That's denoted by the blue shading. So as we go through the winter, we'll follow these phases. It doesn't mean you're going to get snow. It just means the chances kind of you're in the ballpark for a pattern that's favorable to get snow here in southern New England. But again, it always comes down to temperature. Is the cold air in place? If not, you'll end up with rain. So another thing that we look at are called teleconnections, and this is simply looking at jet stream patterns. So when we have a ridge or kind of a bump in the jet stream in one part of the globe, that leads to a trough or a dip somewhere else. So typically, if we want to look at storminess along the east coast, we want a trough in place, and that means we have a ridge somewhere over the west coast. Now, in particular for New England and the east coast, we want that ridge to be somewhere over the northern Rockies, because this usually places the eastern trough in a favorable position for northeast and east coast snow falls. But keep in mind, these patterns are transient, so they'll change over a period of a few weeks. In many cases, it's about a four to week uh, change that we'll see, you know, to last for that time and then begin to switch to another pattern. But something you can keep, on, keep tabs on through the winter is certainly the jet stream pattern. Now, one thing that goes along with this is called the Pacific North Atlantic Oscillation. When it's in the positive phase, we have an east coast trough, a west coast ridge, so that's favorable for cold and snow. And on the up other side of the coin, a negative phase is when we have a ridge of high pressure off the east coast and a trough on the west coast, and that favors more warm and dry weather in our area. So this is something else you can also track through the Climate Prediction Center, and the forecasts are typically available out through the next 14 days. So the winter outlook Probably not much of a surprise, but on the left you can see there's a higher than average probability of above normal temperatures. And keep in mind, these are probabilistic. It's not a definite yes, no as to warm or dry or whatever. Uh, but the odds definitely favor uh, above average uh, temperatures here in Southern New England through December, January, and February. And notice on the right-hand side, we're under equal chances. That just means there's no clear signal for either above or below normal precipitation. Now, this pattern should look familiar to you. It's pretty much a classic La Nina outlook. Notice we have our below average temperatures in the northwest and northern plains, our above normal temperatures across the desert southwest to the Gulf Coast and on to the east coast. And our precipitation chances are above normal in the northwest and northern Rockies, as well as the Great Lakes with below average precipitation throughout much of the Gulf Coast as well. So in summary, weak La Nina conditions are likely for the upcoming winter, and for us this tends to favor near to below normal temperatures and below normal snowfall. But keep in mind if we can get to a moderate La Nina, which is certainly possible, there's a better chance for near normal snowfall here in southern New England. And again, to reiterate, our winter is really influenced more by weekly changes in the jet stream or changes over periods of several weeks. And it always comes down to the, the question, is enough cold air in place uh, to keep us in, in the snowfall? So one thing we want to mention if you're viewing this before December 1st, 2024, is you're welcome to enter our forecast contest. We want to know your forecast for our four main climate sites, Boston, Providence, Hartford, and Worcester. You can enter for one or more locations, maybe all four. Um, but just email your entry to me. My email address is on the screen. And uh, we'll go through all the picks and uh, go through the winners during our winter recap webinar in the spring of 2025. So you're certainly more than welcome to enter and send me your entry today.
So with that, thank you for viewing our Winter Outlook webinar. Again, as we get into the spring, we'll go back and take a look at how everything unfolded. But if you have any feedback or questions, feel free to drop me an email, and I'm certainly happy to respond. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time.